Hello, welcome. Thanks for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Guman Singh. Topping our newscast, pedestrians passing through gutted scott on St. Thomas would notice the bad odor that's now the subject of complaint by some businesses in the area. Business owners directly affected by the smell speak out on the persistent problem. News 2's April Knight has that story. Ned Aradu manages the Pasha Hooker Bar and Grill on Gutted Skada, close to Market Square. Not long after they opened, they were welcomed by an overpowering stench. It smells exactly identical to rotten eggs. It smells more like like human sewage. The drainage system on this side street floods easily when it rains, according to business owners, and some water gets caught in blocked sections of the gutter. This one creates a reek that travels to surrounding streets. According to another business owner, this problem has been going on for years and that their calls for relief remain unheeded. Moses Cardi has owned this barber shop for 15 years. The first day we get here, they had a problem. Every administration came in, go in, in and out, keep saying they will fix it. They never did, did anything. They had dollar smiles and all and say they, they will fix it. And they just tell me what I want to hear. It's unclear whether it's a waste management or public works problem. In the meantime, the tourists who get dropped off at a nearby safari stop get a whiff of the smell, and store owners have to endure the unpleasant consequences. We serve food and, um, you know, people are sitting down, attempting to eat, you know, enjoy the night sky and the fresh air, which there has not been any fresh air for a minute. People complain about it, but when they come inside, they ain't have the smell inside, so they could say tell it a little bit. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. Well, according to Waste Management, they have not received any complaints on the gut it's got a smell within the past week or so, and that if they did, they say they would have to check if it falls under their purview. Public Works, however, has not returned our calls as of news time. Count on two to keep you updated. Well, yesterday we reported on the closure of Brookman Road on St. Thomas because of construction. Now the problem has worsened because of heavy rains over the weekend that disrupted the area being worked on. The entire road is now closed to traffic from both directions. Motorists are advised to seek alternate routes. The road is expected to be navigable by the end of the week. WAPO officials received a permit they've been waiting on for months from the Army Corps of Engineers. WAPA submitted the application in December 2013 and recently received the approval. Officials say this permit will help the propane project. News News' Erica Parsons has more. The Water and Power Authority finally has the permit from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to do marine work. They've been waiting for it to move forward with the propane project on St. Croix. It's been long awaited and a lot of work went into receiving this permit. Wampa filed the application at the end of 2013. With this permit received this month, experts can prepare the Richmond power plant to use propane to generate electricity. We did the turn in Dolphin um, to some, some other fire suppression stuff that goes out by the water and, um, and, and all the rest of the project. Everything that's remaining has to do with getting the Army Corps permit and getting the marine work done. Um, this puts us to remain on our aggressive uh, schedule and, and Officials say they still need the permit for St. Thomas. That project is six months behind of St. Croix. By the end of this month, Orion, uh, the, the contractor for the marine works, will be uh, mobilizing on the island of St. Croix. And we expect them to, to, to get that work done in, a, in about a, a month and a half time period and then move to St. Thomas. WAPA CEO Hugo Hodge said both Governor Kenneth Mapp and Congresswoman Stacey Plaskett were instrumental in helping speed up the process to get the permit. Erica Parsons, News 2. The Marine Work Permit was issued on May 8th by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. It was received by WAPA on May 13th. Schneider Hospital's Chief Financial Officer Fred Vitello has been terminated. Vitello will began his duties at the hospital's CEO in the beginning of 2014. After serving as consultant for a couple of months, he was on board when the hospital brought, brought in vendors, such as the advisory board, to streamline its revenue cycle. He also helped with the resolution of tax-related fees the hospital incurred 
when it paid taxes for a certain years, for a certain number of years, but did not file the returns properly, hospital executives have not given a reason for the termination. The Wallowy Hospital has added a sophisticated piece of equipment to its arsenal. CEO Dr. Kendall Griffith announced the addition of a 64-slice CT scan Friday. He said it will help improve the territory's health care. Just to put things in, in pers perspective, uh, we, we have a single-slice CT scanner, or had, um, now and now we, we have a 64 slice, which means that we have the most sophisticated uh, CAT scan in the region. And that, that allows us to do a whole lot more stuff. It allows us to do brain perfusion imaging um, for, for being able to identify strokes much sooner. It allows us to be able to do ca cardiac C CT and geography. It will eventually be able to allow us to do uh, virtu virtual colonoscopy and virtual bronchoscopy. Well, this morning at 12.37 a.m., the 911 Emergency Call Center received a notification of a shooting incident on Queen Cross Street. Christian said the victim stated that he was on Company Street when he observed a male arguing with a woman. He approached them in the attempt to quell the situation. The male individual took out a gun and shot him in his right shoulder. The victim was transported via ambulance to the Louis Hospital. The suspect, who was identified as Gregory Barnes, was arrested in the area, and the firearm used in the incident was also recovered. Barnes was charged with first-degree assault. Also on Monday, May 18th, at 510, Clifton King, 28 of a state content, was arrested and charged with third-degree burglary. According to the report, King had been positively identified by a member of the Kingdom Hall Jehovah Witness Church located in Lower John Donko as the man seen on surveillance video breaking, entering, and removing items from the church. Bail for Clifton King was set at $70,000 and unable to post bail. He was remanded to the Bureau of Corrections pending his advice of rights hearing. Also at roughly 6.15 a.m. on Saturday, May 16th, officers were dispatched to a home in Cyan Hill to investigate a report of a vehicle that had been damaged by bullets. According to the operator of the vehicle, he was dropping off a friend in the Estate Princess in the vicinity of the chocolate bar as he began to slowly drive off. The vehicle's operator noticed an unknown Hispanic male wearing a white t-shirt and white stocking cap walking towards the vehicle while pointing a gun at him. Beginning to drive off faster, the unknown man said he began to fire shots striking the vehicle as he drove away. The driver of the vehicle was unharmed in the incident. Call the VIPD or Crime Stoppers at 1-800-222-TIPS if you can assist in the investigation. A wealthy businessman with ties to the Virgin Islands was found dead in his D.C. home along with members of his family and a housekeeper. Savas Savopoulos, his wife, their 10-year-old son, and a family housekeeper was found, were found with stab wounds and blunt trauma and burned to death in the family's mansion. D.C. police released surveillance footage of a hooded person running away from the couple's torch Porsche, abandoned the church parking lot. Savopoulos was the CEO of American Management Solutions that operated in the Virgin Islands for a number of years. President Barack Obama signed the National Blue Alert Act, which will establish a network to alert police departments when officers are threatened. The families of Rafael Ramos and Wenjian Liu, two NYPD officers killed in the line of duty in December, attended the signing in the Oval Office. The president said the legislation aims to ensure that when there is a threat against law enforcement, alerts to other officers are going out at a comprehensive, expeditious way. He said it prevents the possibility that other officers will be caught by surprise. And keeping our eye on the economy, here's the New York Stock Exchange with our stock market watch. The Dow, NASDAQ, S&P, the Dow up, 13, NASDAQ and S&P down. Coming up on News 2, the wait is over. And now we know who the best of the VI 2015 winners are. They were revealed in Monday's edition of the VI Daily News. Ever wonder how the VI's best winners are selected? Details coming up. Well, the wait is over, and now we know who the Best of VI 2015 winners are. 
They were revealed in Monday's edition of the Virgin Islands Daily News. Ever wonder how the voting process takes place and just how they go about selecting the VI's best? Here's the details. Hundreds of nominees in hundreds of categories competed for votes. Actually, we're rewarded for being best. We've been going strong for 15 years. The Virgin Islands Daily News has revealed the winners in the Best of VI Annual Readers Poll, 15th edition. It's the Pulitzer Prize winning paper's largest annual promotional publication. For me, the most fulfilling part is actually getting a chance to uh, present businesses with an award for the year. Uh, all the hard work that they've gone and they've, they've, they've put forth for the year as well. And the fact that uh, they actually were rewarded for being best. The Virgin Islands businesses, places and people who deserve to be recognized as the best, such as real estate agencies, mechanics, restaurants, and even media are recognized. It basically started um, with just an idea that we thought it would be great if people could um, just write in and say, hey, you know, we would like to nominate this business for best, you know, jewelry store. And now we've completely digitized the whole process and we actually have a third party that does all of the processing and all of the vote counting for us. So it's completely out of our hands and that way um, all the results are brought in specifically from an outside party. While some are nominated, businesses are encouraged to participate by claiming their listing and selecting selecting the categories in which they really shine. People can register to vote their business, it's free to register, and then once they are registered, they can vote for themselves or anyone can vote for them um, via text, Twitter, Facebook, or our website. We have a live feed ticker on our website, so you can literally see the ticker rolling as people are voting. So if you weren't listed uh, this year, uh, we are definitely uh, working on the new additions for the following year. You can take a look at our website or actually come into the Daily News to register for 2016. So when does the work for the next edition begin? I've already started. <laughs> Now, if you did not get your copy, pick up one at the Daily News or some of the winning vendors. You can log on to dailynewsvi.com or bestofvi.com. Now, we are proud to announce that we were voted. We were voted in as winners once again. TV2, News 2 for Best Local News, St. Thomas, St. John, St. Croix. CBS TV2 for Best Television Video Production Services. St. Thomas, St. John, St. Croix, and Best Productions. Plus, I am honored to receive the Best TV Personality of the Virgin Islands. Big thank you to all of our supporters. Well, it was like a mini food fair at Emancipation Garden Tuesday as VI chefs gathered for the 2015 Coal Pot Cook-Off. They were judged by the public based on different categories, including cooking skills, but everyone was a winner. From saltfish cakes, pumpkin fritters, and johnny cakes, the chefs proved that the Coal Pot will never go out of style. It's amazing right now. You got a lot of people out here in Emancipation Gardens. People are here for culture, to see local food. The purveyors are out here. I mean, this is what it's all about, you know, taking our, taking our culture and just, you know, preserving it for as long as we can. When you think about Queen Mary, they were cooking on coal pots. You know, this is the stuff that made us who we are today, you know, our ancestors. So is it outdated? You know, you can say that, but anytime you put a food on fire, I mean, I think it's just deliciousness, you know. And congratulations to the winners. A Taste of St. Croix, meanwhile, winners cook-off competition that was held today at Rich to Reef Farm. This year's winners compete for the honor of traveling with the VI culinary team to Miami, Florida this summer. The VI culinary team will be traveling to Miami to compete in the annual Taste of the Caribbean competition, and we will have those winners for you. St. Croix student Kobe A. Sutton will be the latest in a distinguished group of Virgin Islands, Virgin Islanders, uh, students attending U.S. service academies after receiving news of his acceptance to the U.S. Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland. Virgin Islands Delegate to Congress Stacey Plaskett congratulated Sutton and highlighted the news of his acceptance as being evidence of his hard work and discipline and the dedication of his parents, teachers, and mentors. Sutton, who is currently a senior at the St. Croix Educational Complex, applied to the Naval Academy in 2014 and says his parents, Lorna, Lorna J. William Sutton and VI National Guard Major Clayton Sutton are the two most inspirational people in his life. Congratulations. The crew of the Coast Guard Cutter Oak rescued two men Thursday afternoon aboard the disabled and adrift sailing vessel Fool's Wisdom. That was approximately 50 nautical miles north of Puerto Rico. The two Grenadian citizens were reported being adrift since May 8th. 
after the sailing vessel experienced engine problems following their departure from the island of St. Martin. The rescued men were unable to report the distress due to their marine radio being inoperable. The crew of the Coast Guard Cutter Oak contacted the Coast Guard and reported being concerned with the sighting of a vessel that appeared to be dead in the water. The Oak transited the vessel to San Juan and passengers to a hospital. Well, the Coast Guard launched its new official boating safety mobile app Saturday on the Apple and Google Play online stores. The Coast Guard mobile app is free and may be used throughout the United States, including Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands. The new app was not designed to replace a boater's marine VHF radio. Features of the app include state boating information and calling features to report pollution or suspicious activity. When location services are enabled, users can receive the latest weather reports from the closest NOAA weather buoys. The app also features an emergency assistance button, which the launch of the app coincides with National Safe Boating Week, which is May 16th to the 22nd. In the market for a new phone, Consumer Reports say the HSD Samsung Galaxy S5 remains Consumer Reports' top-rated phone. Here's more on the testing. Samsung's ad campaign touts the all-new design of the Galaxy S6. Consumer Reports has put the smartphone through a battery of tests for everything from ease of use to camera quality to sound quality. A large size in stockings is hard to sell. The test results are in and the S6 landed below the older S5 in Consumer Reports ratings. It's rare to have a new phone score lower than the phone it's replacing. Samsung gave the S6 an all-new design of metal and glass instead of plastic. They also got rid of the removable battery and card slot for extra storage. The loss of these features and the shorter battery life are some of the reasons the S6 fell behind its predecessor in our ratings. The new design also isn't water-resistant like the S5, although it does offer wireless charging that works with both major standards, Qi and PowerMat. Samsung's Galaxy phones have typically beaten out iPhones in Consumer Reports ratings, but not this time. The S6 and iPhone 6 are essentially tied in our ratings when it comes to things like ease of use, messaging, and web browsing. The S5 remains Consumer Reports' top-rated phone, and its base price is less, $500 without a contract, compared to $600 for the S6 and $650 for the iPhone 6. This is Marcy Whalen. Be sure to stick around. Your news to AccuWeather forecast is coming up next.